Next on Worcester News Tonight, a city neighborhood is having a hard time getting its streets plowed. How one city councilor is looking to change that. Plus, the cleanup continues across the area after high winds knock down trees, wires and utility poles. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. A Worcester City Councilor is asking the city manager to consider reviewing the routes plows and salt trucks take in the city. Councilor George Russell says residents from a city neighborhood called him almost every snowstorm because the plow often forgets them. Our Cam Jandro is live in Worcester tonight with the details. Cam. On the city councilor George Russell says during snowstorms getting calls or complaints really isn't something uncommon, but there's just something about Butler Street that just makes them call almost every single storm. One of the reasons is because the truck that's supposed to take care of them, well, they stop more than a half a mile down the road. It's their final stop, so no one makes their way here to Butler Street. Worcester's Butler Street is passable, but residents say it's a different story right after a snowstorm. City Councilor George Russell says he hears complaints from residents every winter. I think I've gotten more calls on that one street over the years that I've been a city councilor than all the other streets combined. The calls stem from what residents say is improper plowing and sanding in the neighborhood, or sometimes a lack thereof completely. Neighbors who didn't want to be on camera say the incline is very difficult to drive in the winter weather and snow in the road can last for days. But as Councilor Russell points out, Butler Street is currently stuck in a mapping issue. It's in Quincy Village, but it's on a map to be serviced by some trucks that usually service the rest, rest of their route is on Providence Street. Worcester has 500 plus miles of streets to clean every winter storm. Russell asked City Manager Ed Augustus Tuesday to consider rerouting DPW vehicles to take better care of all city roads. When you have human beings and different weather patterns, uh, sometimes you're going to have uh, mistakes or things that need to be improved upon, and, and it's up to us to try to do better. I was about streamlining the service and trying to make sure folks are not missed. Now, Russell says his concern isn't just here on Butler Street, it's all streets. He wants to look at the routes and the maps for city plows and make sure that no street gets forgotten. Live in Worcester tonight, I'm Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. City Councilor Gary Rosen is proposing a safe way to dispose of used needles in the city. At Tuesday night City Council meeting, Rosen says people who purchase needles, either for medical and health reasons or drug use, should be able to bring them back to the stores where they purchase them to dispose of them. He's proposing there could be some type of container to put them in. Rosen says it's a safety issue. We've had issues of DPW work is picking up the yellow bags and getting stabbed by a needle or a lancet. And we certainly don't want that. So we want people to bring them back to the store where they bought them. I don't know why we allow pharmacies to say, we're going to sell them, but no, we won't take them back. It should be their responsibility. He says the next step now would be for the administration to contact a few of the larger pharmacies to see what their policy is around the country. Now to an update to a story we brought you last week. Congress begins debating bills regarding gun safety and the process of purchasing one. Congressman Jim McGovern spoke on the House floor to share his thoughts on a gun safety measure which would help institute universal background checks for firearm purchases. McGovern participated in a question and answer session at the Bancroft School last week on the topic of gun violence and mass shootings. Tuesday, he used his experience with those students while debating the bipartisan bills. Those young people demanded action on gun violence, not unlike other young people all across my district and all across this country. They are terrified and they are tired of seeing one massacre after another, after another, after another, and they're sickened by the unacceptable uh, high rate of gun violence in this country. Colleagues on the others. Congress is expected to vote on the bills in the coming days. A Spencer man dies in a snowmobile crash in Maine. According to the Maine Warden Service, 55-year-old Dwayne Carter was thrown from his machine when he and a friend on another snowmobile failed to make a turn and collided. It's the seventh snowmobile fatality of the season in the state. We're learning the woman who ran the spa in Vero Beach, Florida, where Patriots owner Robert Kraft allegedly visited, ran a similar health center in Oxford. According to police, she was arrested for human trafficking charges back in 2012. Our Olivia Lemon has the story. 
This is Lane Yoon Ma's mugshot from 2012 when she was arrested by Oxford police for human trafficking. She's the same woman police arrested last month in Florida in the same investigation which led to charges against Patriots owner Robert Kraft. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. Um, it, generally, this is what's happened if, you know, they usually move on. Uh, this is the type of business that this individual knows, um, and they just pick up shop and they go elsewhere, in this particular case, to the state of Florida. Oxford Police Chief Anthony Sad was one of the arresting officers in 2012 and a lieutenant at the time. He says the department's months-long investigation in 2011 found a similar scenario to what police found in Florida. They were victims of human trafficking. Um, I think they were caught up in there. They weren't able to leave the facility. Keith Paquin owns the barber shop next door to where Ma's business was. He opened up shortly after she left. I had a couple uh, people come in and <laughs> were asking, um, uh, you know, uh, is the massage parlor coming back or some things like that. According to the 2012 Oxford Police Report, three Asian females were rescued from indentured sexual servitude. One was even told she was coming to attend college. These girls are not consenting. They're here against their will to work in this massage parlor and um, there's only one consenting person involved. That's the person paying. Ma was charged with human trafficking in Massachusetts and pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of solicitation for prostitution. Chief Sad says the town recently enacted a body works regulation. All massage parlors in town must pass. Anybody who's working as a massage person in this uh, organization will have to come in, make themselves known to the PD, provide identification, and receive a permit. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. The chief says there are three businesses in Oxford who need to be approved under the town's new regulations. NBA Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is putting up multiple items to auction for charity, and one has a close tie to Worcester. Abdul-Jabbar is auctioning off items from his memorabilia collection, including championship rings he earned as a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, a game used basketball from his final game, and a key to the city of Worcester. He was presented the key in 2010 by former mayor Joseph O'Brien and is signed the plaque in gold marker. The current bid for the key is up to $325. According to ESPN, a portion of the proceeds will go to his Skyhook Foundation charity to help benefit kids learning about science, technology and engineering. We'll clean up today in communities around Central Mass after Monday's wild weather knocked down trees and left thousands in the dark. The power is being restored, but there's still a lot of work to do. Our Brittany Schaefer has more. No lights. Gary Roy hasn't had power since 3 p.m. on Monday. He says four trees fell down on his road, including this one in his yard. Today, the wind blew harder than I've ever seen up here. I mean, we had like dust devils in the yard from the snow you know it was like uh, swirling around it was and I, I was actually having trouble to stay on my feet i felt like i was going to blow over a little bit and it always comes across into my yard because that's the way the wind blows <laughs> the sutton resident says last night the temperature inside his home dropped to 50 degrees according to the national weather service temperatures will be in the single digits tuesday night roy says getting his power back before then looks doubtful so he's thankful for his generator I started that up at uh, 8 o'clock this morning because I was like, all right, my wife wants to take a shower and, you know, we don't have anything here without electricity, so. Damien LaPierre checked out some of the damage and the reason he also doesn't have power. He had to stay with his in-laws last night to make sure his three-week-old baby was warm. Luckily, we went to my in-laws who are uh, the next street over and they have a generator, so, you know, from the looks of it and the, the size of the trees, it, it, you know, it makes sense that it's been a while, but, you, you know, I would have expected it to be back on by now. Residents we talked to say they hadn't seen any utility crews by mid-afternoon. Roy says storms have brought down trees before and losing power is common in the neighborhood, but it's not a lot of fun. When I was younger, I used to find it exciting, and now uh, my health is not that good, and uh, you know, it's tougher. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but I like to see some power. And there are still power outages in surrounding towns like Auburn and Worcester. According to National Grid here in Sutton, there are still hundreds without power. On 8 Lots Road, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight.
The friends of a Worcester man injured in a gruesome crash this weekend are rallying around him. Andy Rodriguez has a long road ahead of him, but his friends say he's strong and they want to help. Our Rosalind Flaherty spoke to one of them who was with Rodriguez when he was hit. I stepped maybe 10 feet away. Okay, that's when I heard the impact. Dan Aponte was with his best friend, Andy Rodriguez, when the 36-year-old was hit and pinned between two cars in Worcester. Rodriguez had to have both of his legs amputated. He was strong. He stayed with me the entire time. You know, he had no problem talking with me. Prosecutors say the driver who hit him was operating under the influence. The tragic event is weighing heavy on Aponte, who has been close friends with Rodriguez for 10 years. I went and visited him last night. He held my hand when I went to go walk out. Aponte says Rodriguez is loved by many and will pull through this. He is keeping in close contact with his family and is trying to stay positive. He has that infectious smile and that resilient spirit. Rodriguez is also known as a great bartender, most recently working at MB Lounge. He was like the uh, the heartbeat of the bar. He was just a magnet for, for to be happy, you know, and that's really what makes it really very difficult. A GoFundMe account is raising money for his recovery. Aponte knows Rodriguez will be back behind the bar in the near future, and MB Lounge says his job will be waiting for him. You can't separate this man from from being behind the bar. Um, it's his passion, um, you know, trying new things, making new drinks, meeting new people. He will not just sit in a chair. He's the type that's going to, he'll go through all the physical therapy and that's just his MO. His makeup is totally, I'm not doing this because he's just, it's in his blood. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight.